There's a dystopian future coming that no one is talking about. Picture this, the year is 2030. Linus Sebastian dropped his last tech tip and Steve Burke is now more computer than man. He still sounds pretty high at half speed though. Golden tall tower, 56 seconds or whatever it was. You're welcome. And if you bought a GPU in the last couple of years, many of you are due for an upgrade. So let's have a look at your options in 2030. Newegg.com, wait, no, they rebranded, didn't they? Hang on, that's a flagship graphics card for $300 five times the performance of a 4090. And that one is free. But what is performance ultimate? Well, that is probably best summed up as financial extraction. Tactics to drip feed dollars out of your wallet and your ownership of nothing. There is a lot that we need to talk about when it comes to the future of PC gaming. And we've seen this kind of behavior before. And unless we stick to our morals much better than we have done in the past, this community that we are all a part of may not come back from this. Let me explain. Are you tired of overpaying for your favorite games and essential software? Then you need to check out whokeys.com. In fact, let me show you the benefits and how you could save. There's over a hundred games for you to browse for cheap. You can save every month on your office subscription, even fixing the Windows watermark, ruining your game capture and limiting your Windows customization. So let's get a Windows key. I especially like that you can use PayPal for easy, secure checkout and using coupon code TL25 gets you 25% off these are ready low prices. All you need to do is paste your key to become fully activated. And TechLens subscribers like the fast key delivery and peace of mind that I use the service personally. So what are you waiting for? Start saving money and visit the Hookie sponsor link below. Luna, hey, you're cute. The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. So let me show you how dystopia is inevitable unless we intervene. Over the past 18 months, Nvidia had 2% of the gaming market taken from them, which is rather surprising, given that they face some of the worst publicity in their history, leading to the biggest, most consistent outcry from the community. Big price increases, minor generational improvements, partner and media relations breakdowns, even the crypto situation if you want to go back just a few more months. But at the end of the day, Six RTX 4000 series GPUs, including a laptop, are more popular with gamers than any current or previous generation card from AMD or Intel. So the reality is, Nvidia obviously make a product that people want to purchase, and none of these protests have really had any effect on them in a meaningful way, which isn't great. Now, don't get me wrong, that's not because I hate Nvidia, they are the best example of this, quite obviously, if you have a look at their track history. But if AMD or Intel were the top dogs, I really do believe that they would behave similarly. So the reason why I hate this fact is because of the message it sends all of them. If you tell a child not to steal a cookie, but there are no consequences if they do, well, guess who's gonna steal another cookie? Mm. Oatmeal raisin, easily the most underrated cookie. Because even with years of mass outcry from the community, Nvidia outranks all other GP manufacturers combined by three to one. Five to one compared to the second most popular choice. A change of no change. In 18 months, no change. It's incredible to see a company have so much hate-filled passion relentlessly targeted at them and the follow through be practically nothing. In fact, the biggest hit to Nvidia's market share was Intel introducing a third player into this duopoly. It used to be more like an 80-20 split between Nvidia and AMD, but since the Arc series of GPUs were released, Intel have stolen roughly equal parts from both of them. Just think about that. Even though there were four times the amount of Nvidia users, roughly the same number of people jump ship to Intel compared to AMD, while their community sentiment has been consistently dropping hard. Honestly, the only times I can remember them properly backtracking on anything recently was when they blacklisted hardware unboxed and the 4080 12 gigabyte situation. Every other bit of bad press, they mostly didn't care, didn't respond to, and felt no real negative impacts from. Bringing us to the future. Now, you're going to have to bear with me on this. This is the first time that I've ever done it and I'm kind of nervous. We need to connect these GPUs together. Nvidia into AMD. Apparently, when we connect the Intel GPU, we should be time traveling. You ready? Oh, that feels weird. 
No, I don't like that. Why do I feel like I need to sh- So welcome to 2030. That is very different. Wait, something else feels different. Where's my wife? What the fuck? I do not have the mental capacity to deal with this right now. I'm gonna head back downstairs. Well, that was weird to say the least, but let's have a look at the future GPU situation. Okay, not too much has changed. Nvidia are still on top. Oh, apart from one thing, performance ultimate. What is that? Wait, what? We now have subscriptions for stuff like overclocking, ray tracing, upscaling, even higher graphic settings in certain games. That is horrendous. And most people hated it. But like every other community outcry, nothing changed from the backlash of this. How they managed to get it normalized is twofold, and we've seen it before. A reduced price of the newer card to make it look like a good value until you add up the lifetime cost and realize that of course it's more, that's how these payment systems work. And two, marketing new features that are locked out of previous generation cards. This future isn't just about Nvidia though, and by now AMD, Intel, and more threads are all doing it. You can Google them later. Because these are publicly owned major corporations, the focus is obviously profit. Even if the card is cheaper up front, a subscription model like this can generate far more profit compared to selling a single card every few years. The you will own nothing and be happy about it mentality. But there's a second cost benefit to these companies too. Developing software is significantly less challenging than developing ever more powerful hardware. So I wouldn't be surprised if you get a basic card and low latency offload to the cloud for a lot of the computation that can be offloaded. I can even see the marketing material for it now and it really doesn't look good. But why am I so sure of this future and what needs to change to save us all? Well, an easy answer to both is go subscribe to Lewis Rossman's channel, then immediately hate me for opening your eyes to corporate fuckery. But first, let's talk about monopolistic competition because that's the root cause of all of this. Is there a monopoly in the GPU market? Because that nearly always ends up in anti-consumer practices and lawsuits. Honestly, yes and no. No in the sense that no one company has total control of the market, and there are three options in most regions. But in a lot of the ways that it impacts consumers, we feel it like a monopoly. Monopoly, duopoly, triopoly? oligopoly, which is a lot of fun to say, but not fun for consumers, and shares a lot of similarities with a true monopoly, making the GPU market particularly easy to abuse. A relevant recent example of this type of market being abused is DRAM price fixing. Because there are only a few manufacturers of the product, it's much easier for them to collude in anti-consumer practices. In the case of the GPU market, I remember that Nvidia and AMD did settle out of court in 2008 for price fixing accusations, but not much since then. However, even if there's no price fixing, it seems pretty obvious to me that AMD follow Nvidia as a recognized price leader, setting their prices based on how close they can get while still remaining competitive. And it basically translates to the same thing, whether it's um, price leader or price fixing it's higher prices than what the consumer would typically get in something like a perfect competition market. The consumers set the price by purchasing the product that balances cost and features. Unfortunately, when you only have three options, there's less competition driving innovation and value, also contributing to these companies typically netting much higher profits. And what's terrifying is that a single meeting in an oligopoly can change the direction of an entire market if you can simply get three companies to agree on something. Like, say, 16 gigabyte GPUs are limited to $700 and above. If all three of them are doing it, you have no options other than that. That is absolutely terrifying and much less feasible when you have, say, a thousand companies all competing. So given that it's unlikely we'll see a thousand or even a dozen GPU manufacturers because of the barrier to entry, the situation likely won't change without intervention. So what can we do to make sure this dystopian subscription future or another similar one never comes? It's honestly very simple but I also know that it might be harder for some in a market structure like this, where there may not be a perfect direct replacement. 
But if you dislike what a company is doing, don't just complain. Try another option. We need to make it so it's more profitable for these companies to make pro-consumer decisions than anti-consumer decisions. Because the more a company abuses the system and sees no consequences with increased profits, the more abuse will come. Which has been one of the biggest reasons why I switched off Nvidia for my main system, the one that I use the most. I am not saying that AMD and Intel are perfect, but Nvidia have clearly outclassed them in this regard over the past few years, leading me to have a real moral battle with this as somebody that could actually influence a little change. And I've been looking at these news articles over the years, thinking I don't want to support the normalization of $1,500 GPUs. I don't want to support legal loopholes and corporate f***ery. I don't want to support abusing partners and consumers, but most of all, I don't want to support what's next because it's getting worse. What I want to support is innovation and value. I'm not saying any GP manufacturer fits this. All that I'm saying is that if a company makes a decision that makes you mad enough to say that you're going to switch on Reddit, maybe that should be enough for you to actually switch and find another option because that is the only way to punish them. And if the option you choose ends up becoming the bad guy by the next time that you upgrade, Switch again, stop giving them your money. Let them know it is not okay. Because the only way to correct bad behavior is to actually punish the child that keeps stealing all the cookies. Yeah. And an update from my swap to AMD, I have managed to fix the idle power draw issue whilst performing some gaming optimizations for a future video, which means you should check out the original swap to AMD video, where we covered why you might want to do so, the visual differences I observed, and the bugs I both fixed and caused by swapping to AMD. And you can check that out by clicking here. Otherwise guys, share, like, subscribe, they are always appreciated, and I hope you have an amazing day.